Hey everyone, what's up? This is Simon from Galaxies.dev and today is the second React Native app review episode on this channel. So you submitted a few applications and I picked three of them. I actually have tons more for future app reviews, but please, if you got an application, drop it down in the comments so you might be included in one of our upcoming reviews. And while you edit, directly click the like button and subscribe to the channel for more React Native videos. So I'm pretty sure we can learn a lot from today's application. First application will be a lyrics application second one a skiing one and the third one from a fellow youtube creator a family savings application as always i'm not doing this to flame these applications i'm doing this so we can all learn and build better applications in the future and now let's dive into it All right, so first app today is called Lurist, a song writer's toolkit. I selected this application because it actually has 49 rating, which is pretty high, and it is completely different from what we usually review. I, I, at least I feel like, I, I haven't heard about that one. So let's check it out. Lurist, here I come. Um, okay, I'm, I'm starting the app and I'm, um, okay, I'm in this view and I'm, I'm kinda like, I don't know <laughs> what's going on. I'm completely locked. Okay, so I figured it out. Uh, I just have to click next. The problem seems to be, um, so I initially get this pop-up here, which is, I mean, yeah, not too bad. Okay, thank you for using Lurist Auto. It's mine. Yeah, well, I probably wouldn't do it right here. But the bigger problem was that initially the keyboard uh, was focused because the field had some um, some focus. And also, uh, you see what's going on. The thing I usually hate about lock-in screens, so I'm, I'm sorry to already... Uh, say something bad in the beginning. But anyway, let's see. FAQ takes me to an FAQ page uh, and help takes me to probably a help page. Okay, powered by Instabug. Okay, yeah, they're using Instabug. Not too bad. I uh, wanted to try that out uh, for a long time. Let me know in the comments if you want to see something about Instabug. Okay, sign in or create an account. So let's create an account. Oh, have you seen that one? That was cool. Look at this. You click in the input field and this, the the logo goes small. That is cool. I really like that. I haven't seen that one before, I think. All right, so let me create an account. You should also make sure that you close the actual keyboard when the user submits your form. Um, I clicked submit and while it was loading, I was still seeing the keyboard. I don't know what's going on with the keyboard in this application, so really, really strange. Okay, anyway, I'm now checking my inbox. All right, I got this email. If you want to sign in, click this link. If you don't know how to request, I'm curious what happens now. Okay, this is using Firebase. Uh, I've saw it with Firebase app. And apparently if I just use this on my Mac now, it's not working. So I assume I actually have to click that link straight, yeah, straight from the device. If I don't click it from the device, it won't work. Once again, uh, I need to fill out some forms. So let's quickly do this. I actually don't know because I really don't know what this application is about. So uh, I would rather have not to, f oh, do I definitely don't want to fill this out now. <laughs> so let's see, creating profile. As I said, I think it's using Firebase under the hood. Uh, I kind of like these pop-ups. I think I've seen that styling library. Is it like React Native paper or, or elements? I'm not completely sure. But pretty cool. Um, they have some some email flow going on here, uh, which is pretty a, a kind of good idea. So yeah, mobile apps are cool and stuff, and sometimes you can retain users. But if you get access to their email, make sure you drop them into some kind of sequence um, because they will eventually b forget about your application. And just having some sort of email sequence and, and introduction is really really good to create a connection with your users. Okay, back to the app. And let's checking out what the app actually does. Uh, we got this uh, screen here, which I usually don't read. So I think it's an intro. The, the icons are pretty uninspiring. Um, so maybe you could do a better job these days, especially with AI around. And then here we are. Uh, we got a tab bar. Um, don't have anything. That page looks, looks kind of odd to me. I don't know why, to be honest. But uh, this year is kind of like tab search i don't know it's completely misplaced to me i have three up here i don't know what that three here is so uh i, I honestly don't know it's probably three news items i'd say um okay that means i yeah okay well that is a pretty bad way of hiding your paid offer um i would definitely make that somehow more enticing than having a three a, a three is 
probably not the best way to market your pro offer. Anyway, um, settings. Yeah, well, unlock Lyris Plus, uh, settings, settings, all of that is okay. I can message the creator via iMessage. Okay, that's interesting. Well, thank you for that. Uh, let's see, I can search, I can browse Lyrist, okay, which I can't use because I'm not pro. And I can search here and then I will see probably, yeah, I don't wanna play this now. Uh, I can see the lyrics for something. It is kind of strange on these pages here that I don't see a back button. You see, I got this scroll view down here, which um, is okay. I'm kind of blocking the uh, safe area down here. I don't know why that is the case. Uh, and I don't really have a back button. I can, of course, swipe to go back, but I really, really don't like that. I, I wanna have that bar up there at least. I mean, you can hide that bar when you scroll down, but please, at least have the bar. Uh, we have a word finder, search for a word. Galaxies. Okay, so this perfect rhymes with LXCs. So if you're an inspired musician, uh, I would encourage you now to create a song with Galaxies and LXCs. <laughs> Oh my, I like this. If I would be a better singer, I would probably create a song about galaxies and galaxies. Maybe you can do something. Um, mark me on, on Twitter or send me on YouTube. Don't stop for two minutes or you will lose what you wrote. Oh, I like that. Uh, this is like a brain dump thing. So let's see if I stop. Will I really lose what I do? Uh, don't stop until time is up. Yeah, that's that's pretty cool. Um, actually, I've seen this more for like writing down your thoughts in general, but um, it's kind of cool to see this like uh, implemented here. I like that. I really like that. Um, that is like a very cheap version of showing a timeout, but anyway, it's cool. Under help, I assume this is some sort of AI. I can't find good ideas. Okay, it's actually ideas. Um, will anyone answer me or am I writing with the like the creator of this app? I have no idea. I'm sorry if I've spammed you. Uh, really, some views in this application are really strange. Like I go to help, I see no information about what this is. I go to writer's block, it immediately starts this and I have no more header, which looks kind of odd. The word finder is cool. Um, I can't do anything else with these. Uh, the search is also okay. And my library also looks a bit odd. Now, I am pretty sure that the functionality of this application is really, really good to get unstuck if you're a singer, songwriter, lyricist, writer, whatnot. But the whole UI, is to me very confusing. It is not strict. We see uh, things not being aligned, things being completely out of context. Um, going to some pages removes, for example, uh, if I go here, it removes the header when I start writing. So uh, all the help page as well. It's really just not consistent. And to me, that feels like, I just feel this unease in me. And I don't know why, but I'm Pretty sure that others will feel it as well. So again, really great functionality. We had some problems with the initial sign up and the input text field being uh, featured. But beyond that, if you're a singer songwriter, I'm pretty sure that Lyris is a great application with great features. Just the UI could be a bit better. Second app of the day is called Contours Ski Touring GPS. I selected this application not because of the ratings, because they're not really a lot, but actually because it looks really interesting. Like these screenshots, they really got me like, oh, that looks cool. Let's let's check it out. So let's see. I think this is an application for people going skiing, discover next track, your next mountain adventure, and like to see that tracks or probably any problems on that track. Let's see, contours, uh, ski splitting. I can't scroll that view. That is already a big plus. I don't know why, but my I was thinking that this button here is actually bigger than the other buttons. Um, I don't know if that's the case, but what I don't like is this and again this. So yeah, locking with Facebook should definitely be that blue color. And yeah, maybe this is also your primary color, but then I don't know, then this is a kind of bad idea. So if you have sign in with Apple and white, that's cool. Uh, but I would make my login definitely in a different color. So I don't really like how this looks. Um, probably, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, probably just use a different color. Beyond that, don't have an account, sign up. That's cool. Where will this take me? It will take me to this page. Then I can scroll on this page. Um, I don't know. I don't like it, to be honest. Also, I don't really like how the fields look. Um, I can't really tell the difference between these text fields and this here, which should actually be the button. Um, so... Uh, I don't like it. I also don't like center text in general. I don't know why, but I don't like it. Anyway, I will use sign in with Apple because I really like this and sign in with Apple is just 
the option I usually pick. Alright, we are signed in and here we go. Please accept our terms and conditions. Um, I don't know why this this is on dark background up here and I rarely, I, I mean, I have rarely seen that stuff in mobile applications. Mm, I mean, yeah, well, accept it for now, but I don't know why. Apparently, it's like a legal required thing. Okay, this view is interesting. It's like a, we, we have this standard like um, slider here, but I actually can't swipe left and right. If I see these dots here at the bottom, I kind of expect that I can swipe uh, horizontal, but I can't. Beyond that, I can do this, which kind of looks interesting, like uh, we have the shadow dragged up there, but I feel like it, it actually shouldn't be scrollable. Okay, let's hit let's go. Hello, location access. This is good. Uh, this is exactly what I usually tell you. If I start the app and get the notification, this app wants to send you whatever, wants access to whatever, I usually press no and it's kind of hard to go back to that. So explain why your app needs the location and then ask for it. So yes, this is okay. Uh, allow notification, mm, I kind of don't want to. And my setup is complete. Yeah, well, it's it's okay. Let's not hate everything. All right, here we go. We have a tab bar with, once again, really inspiring icons taken from... <laughs> anyway, um, I like already like that view. Let me just get a feeling. Okay, if I press the center button, it brings up this bottom sheet. Here we go with a profile. That is like the most classic profile. Um, yeah, that's cool. Uh, if I click edit, yeah, I can edit like that. That's the, the like that should be probably the blueprint for a profile. Maybe we can discuss if we need the loading spinner up there or if the loading spinner should more be in this area, like in, in an Instagram style. But anyway, uh, and this here is in the settings. This is probably like one of the the worst ways, like the like. I don't like that settings page, sorry. I, I mean, a settings page is not sexy by default, but this is really like, there are no icons. The groups are somewhat uninspiring. You could at least have like a like a subtitle if you group stuff together, but like this, it just looks like, like it's look, I don't know. I don't, I don't like it at all. Anyway, let's get back to home because that screen was actually pretty cool. I like the icon up here. I like it when we do something different and not just have text. Uh, avalanche bulletins local area and favorite whatever yeah I will add is yeah that card is also pretty cool um, I kind of like that select a region on the map yeah well just what is this region yeah let's select Switzerland and then I will add this okay that's cool example activity back county safety so we have some articles here uh, which are interesting like these views are kind of interesting uh, following athletes. Okay, I can also follow other athletes. So it's like a like a social experience as well. That is pretty cool. That is cool. Um, yeah, with these tricks. That is definitely something I enjoy. Um, well done. Well done on that part. But that's more about the functionality and not so much about something else. So let's discuss the rest. Here we have a bottom sheet uh, that I can drag up. If I click discover... Um, I think this is actually a good usage of a bottom sheet. I've seen way worth. I can also switch the map layers like this. Yeah, the usage of this map feels kind of natural. Um, and that is usually a good sign. So if I can just click around and I don't notice anything that like strikes me as really bad or like gives me anxiety or negative feelings, then it means it's pretty well done. Um, okay, if I click the plus in the middle, that is... Um, that is good as well. I just don't know why here is an empty uh, button. I also can't click that. I can record an activity. I really like that view, by the way. That is a cool view. That is inspired from like some running or walking apps I am used. You have like the big time and you have some more settings and more information and uh, quick buttons here down at the bottom. Yeah, this is definitely cool. This is cool. I really like that. Okay, let's hit save. I can then save my activity and it's synced and probably it shows up in my profile. Mm, maybe it wasn't long enough. But yeah, this is a cool app. That's exactly what I was looking for. So the Contours Ski Touring GPS application. I think this is a pretty cool thing if you do tours, if you like do whatever skiing or walks in the mountains. Um, 
pretty cool also that you can share it with like other people or follow the routes that other people have taken good usage of maps and bottom sheets the only thing i was complaining about was like the bit in uninspired bottom stuff and of course the settings page and the scrollability of some views but beyond that I like how the bottom sheet is used and how that functionality is in some screen hidden behind or inside the bottom sheet and how it works. So if you're into tours, go check it out. Contours Sheet Touring GPS. Third application of the day is from my good friend Vadim Savin, who some of you might know at Not Just Developer. He's doing epic videos. If you're not subscribed to his channel, you should definitely do it now on YouTube. Um, and he has submitted an app built with React Native, Expo, Expo Router, Tamagui, and Superbase. And I know that this application was actually part of one of uh, the Not Just Dev hackathons, as far as I know. We talked about this on the podcast as well. I want to directly start with a little point of critique right in the beginning. So I know making screenshots like this is okay, they look good, but it's usually not what you see. So if we compare this to contours, they offer more. Usually you see some sort of text and you see the iPhone device. So Vadim, you could have definitely done better with the screenshots in the App Store. But let's get into the actual application. All right, so Famify, a savings goal tracker. And Vadim is doing the classic thing that I don't like. It's immediately asking for permissions to push notifications. So mm, I don't like that. Beyond that, um, well, this is also kind of interesting, actually. Um, I get an error message from my tool that's reflecting my iPhone, which says failed alert, failed to get push notifications. I don't really see this in the actual application on my device. So it seems like there was some some sort of, I don't know, some some background problem in the application, which was the app couldn't get the push token because I denied it. Uh, and then it kind of, I don't know, silently failed or triggered an alert that didn't came up to my UI. Very interesting. I don't know what's going on. Just as a little reference for Vadim. So here we go. This is the starting screen. This is very kind of untypical. I usually see like the introduction screen with the, with the slides or I have to create an account. So it's kind of refreshing that I don't have to do this. Um, Vadim used Tamagui um, for the bottom navigation here. I don't know, this shadow, this drop shadow is really too big. It feels like 2010 or something. That drop shadow is just too much to me. Also, my profile, is this like my, how is it getting my name? Why is it Good Morning Simon? I probably installed this before. Or maybe I was signed in before. Oh, that is the screen I was expecting. Of course, here we go. Yep, that is my goal. What I like is that Vadim actually used some animations here. So if you're making a boring introduction screen, try at least to spice it up. He's using some different backgrounds, some different colors. Yes, that is more of what I like. Okay, continue. And I probably um, used my sign up before I, yeah, most likely I used this. Alright, so apparently if I got my password, so I went through the dialogue and one thing I noticed is that it looks like this dark color is the theme of the application, but then at the top we have this like default iOS blue for the, the back stuff. I don't really like this. This feels like completely out of, like it feels very unnatural to this application. You see everywhere it's using that dark theme and then up here we have this like default blue. I don't know. I. I don't see it. I don't like it. I see it already here in the screenshots. So we're gonna have to talk about that in a second as well. All right, so because I didn't receive any email with a new password, I just decided to create a new account and apparently I made a typo, but whatever. Here we go again. So um, I have the introduction. We have that screen. We have a saving screen, which is <laughs> completely empty. I mean, you can do that, but maybe just give me a glimpse of information of what this screen should be about. Maybe just a text like you have no savings. Could be okay, would work for me, but just, just having a blank screen? Mm. I don't like that. Transactions, yeah, same for this screen. And for the profile screen, um, yeah, well, I mean, I said it before, it's like the, the default profile screen. I don't know if I have some problems or the apps have some problems, but why has this button no text? I don't know if, it, if this is on me or not. So we have this very dominant button up here, which I really like. So if you have an application where there's like 
one thing that users quickly need to do in the in the skiing application it was starting a workout or, or tracking your activity and here it is of course adding like a transaction or, or whatever money uh, happens here so that button certainly makes sense in, in those cases uh, which brings me to another screen I kind of felt like that screen would not open another page I don't know why but if I have a button like this at the bottom, I feel like it usually triggers some sort of quick action. It opens the camera, it opens a modal, or in this case, I was actually expecting like a bottom sheet that would come up. I don't know why, but it would feel more natural to me. So I can now save towards your goal. I can save 200, whatever. Uh, we have some, yeah, the usual text input stuff with React Native, we all know about that. Uh, but at least we got a safe area view, so and we also got a nice text uh, a number input. So yeah, definitely make sure if you want to capture numbers, use the numbers keyboard and not the regular keyboard. Uh, I don't have a saving goal yet. What are you saving for? Um, I don't know, new camera maybe, uh, or start with a template. I can also start with a template. So what's a new camera? I don't know, 800 euros. Uh, we could also use like, a, like some sort of currency in here. That would be cool as well. Um, select target date. Okay, yeah, nice date picker, usage, and something went wrong. Yeah, that's bad. That's bad when something went wrong. Can I save 500? Oh my. Um, <clears throat> kinda lost here. I wanna use something went wrong. Oh my, is it me or what's wrong? I feel like is it maybe the backend is down and nobody has used the application and now the backend on Superbase is down because I think this is actually using Superbase. Let's try one more thing, emergency, yeah. I. I kind of feel like the backend is down at this point. So uh, there's not a lot I can do. Um, can I just save? I do have that goal. That's a pity. But anyway, what I already wanted to tell you before is again, the colors. So yeah, I like the green colors and, and I like even like the darkish color, but why this? Why blue? Why active blue? It's completely out of the scope of the the theme of this application. I really don't know why Vadim was using these colors. And what I also said is that, um, also I don't really see the usage of Tamagui a lot in a lot of places. I don't know, it's probably... Also, I want a dark mode. I want the dark mode as well. By the way, this is a better, a way better example of a setting screen. We have seen a setting screen before that I really did not like. This one, I like. I like the icons, I like the structure, even the color gives me like a like a vibe of a rainbow, really good, really like, yeah, just, just good. Um, okay, here we go, I also got dark mode, let's check it out. Yeah, it, it looks cool in dark mode, I think it even looks a bit better in dark mode, maybe I'll just go with dark mode with, for this application. Um, we got a lot of other stuff in here. Hey Simon, built by not just dev. We got the theme. I can not change my email as I noticed. Um, but beyond that, really great example of a setting screen. Still not seeing that button though, and also still not seeing anything else. So I know this is probably not a big application and it's not becoming a big thing, but still we can learn from these applications. Even if you just do the app for fun, or as Vadim did in a hackathon or uh, a startup week, whatever. It's a cool idea and certainly he learned a lot about Superbase and using Tamagui in that application. But also there are things we can critique like the usage of this default blue that I see in some places of this application. Uh, then the backend is not working. We have some empty screens here and there. Um, so of course make sure you have some fallbacks for empty screens, for API calls to the backend going wrong. Um, and probably, as I said, if you have like a like a button down here, which triggers some quick action. A quick action to me is not a completely new screen. Anyway, if you want to get a feeling for it, check it out. Savings, Gold Tracker, Femify, and thanks again, Vadim, for submitting it. Oh! Right, and that's it for today's app review. I highly enjoyed looking at these applications because they all had something really good about them, but they all had some elements that could definitely be improved. So the one application, the first one had really strange views where like the header was shifting and I didn't really understand what the view was about or the input fields were automatically focused. So 
Keep an eye on those things if you have input fields that you don't mess up like the keyboard and also notice if you're using like the iOS simulator, the hardware keyboard usually doesn't come up. So you have to press command K to actually open the hardware keyboard in the simulator to better understand what's going on. Additionally, the setting screen in the one application was really uninspiring and well, the last application from Vadim really had a great example of the setting screen with icons while Vadim was using some of the stock colors for the React navigation or actually using Expo Router, so keep an eye on the consistency of the colors in your application and also, as I noticed, that bottom sheet thing or the buttons, if you have like an action button in the tab bar, I kind of expect a quick action. So make usage of cool bottom sheets and just give the user a feeling of stuff is happening naturally. The app just evolves and you're not just pushing users to different screens and they're in completely different context. All right, thanks again to everyone who submitted an application. I got a lot more on my list, but if you have something, drop it down in the comments, leave a like, subscribe and check out galaxies.dev if you also want to build some of these great applications because we've got tons of courses that will help you to get to that stage. So check it out, galaxies.dev, and I will catch you in the next video. So until then, happy coding, Simon.